wanted to say that on Monday, April the 24th, 2023, at approximately 10 a.m., my citizen's petition was approved for today, May 2nd, 2023, and yet it did not appear on today's agenda. Madam Mayor, why did you direct the city manager to remove it? Ma'am, and I normally don't do this, but I haven't even seen a citizen petition. It goes through the city staff office, and I see it when it's on the agenda. So why yours was or was not, I don't know. Well, I'm curious as to find out what happened to it, because it was approved on the day that I was over here. You still have three minutes and 16 seconds. I'm still kind of waiting for an answer to find out why I wasn't on this agenda. I don't, Anybody I just know? told you, I don't have the answer, but you got three minutes well, and else, four seconds. Can you tell me who else has authority over the agendas? I'll do my best to answer. It's incorrect that it was approved. What we've tried to do, and with Ms. Marcy as well, is to help people comply with the Open Meetings Act. You have to have something specific so the public can read the agenda and know what is going to be talked about. When it's overly broad, that doesn't work, doesn't mean comply with the Open Meetings Act. So I can't remember what yours was, but I'm sure it was one of the ones that was over, overly broad, and you should have received an email from the city. I received nothing. Okay. Nothing, nothing, not a telephone call, anything. And my title had to do with the ineffectiveness of local government <coughs> as far as the citizens of Flynn. I don't know how I can be plainer than that. Um, very disappointed that you all decide to scrutinize every little thing that the citizens try to get up and do. That <laughs> That's not a democracy, last time I checked. readjustment and attitudes. I've mentioned that before in one of my statements. I believe it calls for that again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to speak on firearms in the city council chambers. This seems to come up every time there is some kind of brouhaha in here where responsible citizens exercising their right to self-defense to be armed are threatened with being disarmed. Now, unlike the council, I do not have all these police officers heavily armed and armored to protect me when I walk out the door. I need to take responsibility for my own actions. I have never attacked a member of the council. However, council members have assaulted citizens, which is what kicked this off. I'm over 70 years old. I'm kind of broke. Got fake hips, got lots of scars. Jumped out of one too many airplanes. Got blown up one time too many. So I need a little extra edge because even though in my youth I was uh, a martial artist and did pretty darn well at it, I no longer can do that because I'm broke. I'm an old man. <coughs> and somehow that seems to threaten some folks. Now, Ms. Fleming wrote a letter to the editor, and I've known Ms. Fleming for a long time, and I know that she used to carry a firearm when she was on the dais, and before she did, I used to escort her when we were over across the street out to her car at night because of the homeless and the crime in downtown Colleen in the dark. But now, I'm not good enough. Now, I'm hoping that the plan isn't to reinstitute to the 30-06, 30-07, and I don't want to point any fingers because I may be 
unfortunately having to speak before I hear what you actually have to say. So I apologize if that is not the intent of this, but since I can't speak when you're discussing it, I have to say it in advance, which leaves me at a disadvantage. So I would prefer that we continue to allow responsible citizens to carry responsibility for their own protection. And please keep in mind, normally you only have two police officers. You got a guy sitting in the back and a guy sitting outside. So a bad guy comes in, he knows where that police officer is sitting. Okay? Knows exactly where he's sitting. If bad guy wants to start shooting up stuff, who's he going to take out first? So there's at least five armed police officers here tonight. What are you afraid of? Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan Alcorn. John Romero, Council, City Manager. I stand before you today to speak on the discussion item of <clears throat> arms within the uh, chambers. A memorandum dated uh, May 25th, 2016 was submitted to the Secretary, City Secretary requesting that concealed and open carry prohibitions at council meetings, boards and commission meetings be an item of discussion during a future workshop. The council prohibited citizens and residents from lawfully carrying concealed or open at council meetings, boards, and commissions, January the 5th, 2016. The item was placed on the agenda for a discussion at the council workshop, July the, 20, uh, July the 5th, 2016, as DS 06016-081. Subject to the discussion, the item was placed on the meeting agenda as RS 16-076, where the council considered allowing for carrying concealed handguns at the city's open meetings by no longer posting notice in accordance with Penal Code Title 10, Section 46.03B14. A, a companion resolution, RS 16-077, considered allowing the open carrying of handguns at the city's open meetings by no longer posting notice. A motion was made in second to approve RS 16-076 the motion carried six to one. The motion was made and seconded to approve RS 16-077. The motion carried six to one. Notably, the council member who later called for and recently called again for prohibitions voted in favor of RS 16-076 and RS 16-077 respectively. At a recent, as recently as yesterday during a, a workshop of the Bell County Commissioner's Court covering this identical subject, a speaker intoned the tragedy that took place at the Uvalde, Texas Elementary School. The speaker also mentions the presence of over 300 law enforcement per personnel after the fact. I wonder the commitment to the task a person who has or would tend toward assault and murder have the same energy if gun-free zones were not advertised. I wonder if things would have turned out differently had anyone willing to carry had in their possession inside of the school as events unfolded an equal or greater tool to blunt the deranged person who carried out the atrocity. Further, and historically speaking, I wonder if former slaves had at the time the right to keep and bear arms that right blunted and denied by the Plessy v. Ferguson decision would a Jim Crow ever ever be a thing, along with the Ku Klux Klan, the first American terrorist organization formulated by the Democratic Party after, after 1865. Are you ready to take on the legal liability for my safety of every person within this and other public spaces? Cain killed Abel with a stone and then asked after the fact, Am I my brother's keeper? The great misnomer of our day is that is that of gun violence. How does an inanimate uh, object function on its own? Who's really responsible for the functioning of an inanimate object? Do we blame pencils and paper, or pens for misspelled words? Inanimate objects do not function on their own. It takes human interaction in order for them to function. 
I have yet to be assaulted by a stone, knife, or gun, but the potential of a human behind either is always present. People who legally own and responsibly carry either concealed or open endure extensive vetting and background check. If it ain't broke, don't fix it until it is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone can tell us, citizens, how we get the ability to post it on the agenda as the presenter instead of the citizen that is commenting, that would be great. I know personally I would love to get 18 minutes to stand up here and talk to the council about a 22-item agenda instead of four minutes and then get five minutes of question and answering time. It would be wonderful. But since I'm limited to four, please try to bear with me. Mayor, I'm going to turn in a different sheet for you because I've completely changed up what I'm going to say. Uh, if this body is not completely violating our First Amendment rights, they are at least severely limiting it. By limiting us to only four minutes, by saying it has to be only what is on the agenda, which is not in the spirit of the Open Meetings Act. The Open Meetings Act simply says the body cannot discuss something that is not on the agenda. It does not say citizens cannot discuss it. If you are going to continue to say that that is the case, and you are saying that the clean ISD Board of uh, Directors is not compliant with Open Meetings Act because I can go to their meeting right now and speak on anything. I would love to be able to go into more detail on how the curfew ordinance is no good for our use. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is completely contradictory to every single thing that the council has done regarding Prop A and not giving a criminal record to our young people. Instead, this should be listed as an enhancement or strictly for people who have priorly violated. I would love to go into more detail about why Number 7, Anthem Park, should not be getting any more money out of the tourists, nor should any money be put towards it, since Anthem Park is no longer going to be committing to the same thing that they were agreed to in the PUD. I would love to go into more detail about the battery farm over on Featherline and get information like who's going to pay the $180 million and what is the long-term cost to the city? Why are we putting it in a populated area? I'll have time. I would love to go into more detail about putting a B3 in an agricultural and AR1 zone that is currently in our controlled growth zone according to our future land use map and according to our comprehensive plan. I don't have time to go into depth on that because I don't have 15 minutes. I would really love to know why we're going to spend an extra $121,500 to hire an engineering company that would just oversee and observe the engineering and construction of the Rosa Herford Bob Gilmore Center. We should hire another staff member if we're willing to pay that much for one project. It would cost us less in the long term. I don't have a lot of time to go into much detail on that. I would love to tell you every reason why I'm very supportive of the selection for our new chief of police. I don't even have time to go into detail on phrasing that. Yesterday, as it was mentioned, the county commissioner's court also discussed banning firearms to the citizens. And they resoundingly decided to do nothing and to allow the citizens to continue to have their second amendment right. I strongly feel, as do many of the people here, that this council limits our First Amendment rights, but to violate our second in the same time is completely throwing away your oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution. As I stated yesterday, it would not be able to prohibit any other weapons. Someone can come in with a knife and stab someone, and unless there's an officer with a gun nearby, there's no way to safely disarm them. As I also told the commissioners yesterday, your oath says to defend and uphold the Constitution, which means not violating our Second Amendment rights. Citizens who are, re are regularly shut down in silence, and when the city refuses to listen to the engaged, what they will instead hear is the voices of the enraged, no matter how calmly it is stated. I have a lot more I'd like to say, but again, I'm not afforded the time. Thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Yeah. Also, well, I'm back again. And as you probably know, it's about the Senior Center. Yes, ma'am. I think it's about time we move forward on that. It's been too long. It's going to cost more money now than it would have. Yes, council came in to be, or not council, I'm sorry. COVID was a big drawback on it. That's been gone for over a year. We've been back to work. 
bids were not made right away to have the construction move forward. That is my not from the knowledge that I've gotten. And then when it did put out bids, they didn't get any bids because all of the other catastrophes that have been going on, all the construction workers were doing that. So now they finally put out it again. To my understanding, I believe we got two bids for construction to move forward. And we haven't moved forward yet. And now we're just here to pass something to go on to city council next week. And I certainly hope you move forward on that. It's been too long for the seniors. They've been patient. Some of them have just plain given up. They don't have the faith in city council. And it's not just this council, because it started with the other council also. It's an ongoing thing that has to come to the end. The seniors are suffering for it. The center that we have, the Lions Club, is fantastic. But do you realize we have 4,000 members for the senior? Now, you know the size of that that building is not going to accommodate. When the other one is done, we're going to be looking pretty good. I volunteer there almost every day of the week. But I do get Fridays off to do my housework. But um, any given day, there's between four and 500 seniors that goes through the doors of the Lions Club. Fortunately, it's not all at one time. But the staff, they can't be applauded enough. How they can bring in all of the new ideas. And I have, I don't know if anybody, I guess I dropped it. No, I didn't. Has read the scoop. Look at the back page. Look at the programs that that staff has brought forward. People get angry. The seniors are getting to the point that they just don't care to hear anything more because it's not going to come about. Very few of you have even gone in there to see the programs, unless you've done it on a Friday and I didn't, I wasn't there. Please, please move forward. Sometimes your feet have been drawing to the point that, okay, well, we have to table this, we have to table, oh, let's bring it to this next one. And then by the time you bring it to the next one, the price has gone up. Now, do you want to keep throwing money away that way? Let's get this project done. Give it to the seniors. The, everything says, oh, it's for the kids, for the kids. Don't get me wrong. I am all for the kids. But they're, all of their projects seem to come first. And it's finished right away. This senior has building was put on way before some of the projects that have already been done. Maybe this project isn't important to you because you're not at that age. We have lost. Um, Ms. Hinkle, you have one? Yes, ma'am. 30 uh, seconds. Council, can I she have 30 seconds? Uh, yes, ma'am. All I want to say is we have lost senior members this past year who have passed away, who talked highly of the senior center that Colleen has. They were looking forward, and they would have seen it, even if it was only halfway on schedule. They would have been here to see it, and now they're gone. How many more have to miss out because you're not moving on it? Thank you for your time. Ms. Hinkle, I just want to make a comment. My last name is Hank. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, City Council, just here to piece of it, Assistant Manager, City Manager. Well, I understand the reason why Ms. Hinkle was upset about things, because every time we have a meeting, we bring it up. And I know you guys support us. Because every time I ask you for something individual like the whole city, help me take care of those seniors. And I appreciate that. 
Miss Kelly just got started. She, we've been hawking about the, the stove being fixed. She finally got the money to get it taken care of. But that stuff done went up according to life itself. Y'all are doing the best you can. And I appreciate that. But like you said, we got to keep telling people we're going to do it. I know there's going to be more work for the senior advisor, but we're going to get it split up. But we don't mind. We don't mind because I appreciate what you're doing for us. And keep me informed because everybody <coughs> cry about something, somebody listen up there. And somebody get it taken care of with no problem. I appreciate you. That's good enough, Miss Inky. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Discuss possible action regarding council member decorum. It's quite a euphemism. Leading to that question on the 18th of April, I'd step one step beyond this podium, Madam Mayor. You would have had 100 cops on top of me. But instead, you lost control of the meeting, you failed to control the public, you demonstrated via your own culpable inefficiency, your inability to execute your most basic duties, amongst the chief of which is keeping the citizens safe. You could have ended that entire situation in display by Mr. Wilkerson by simply standing up and directing the sergeant at arms to escort Mr. Wilkerson back to his seat or out of the building. But you failed to do so. And as the paper very accurately updated the story, it was you that raised the specter of the weapon. Forgive the affectation. Ken, Mayor Pro Ten, he has a weapon. My statement merely confirmed it. That's all I did. I made no threats. Video, audio, quite clearly, proffers the evidence. The contrary, I was not the one looking to be kinetic. And as a result, you want to play the reverse Uno card. You want to disarm me and everybody else. Why is there the double standard? That seems to be a common theme that's been discussed tonight. Rules for us, but not for you. Well, you failed, Madam Mayor. As Mr. Wilkerson stated, he was going to re-examine his position. And again, previously in the press, and his comments on the record to the press, I'm a lunatic. Well, you look up the behavior and what that word is, the person who was quite visibly not looking to engage on that level while you were tugging at his arm unsuccessfully. Mr. Wilkerson is the one who was displaying said behavior that he accused me of. I made no threats. Quite the opposite. So, after giving Mr. Wilkerson some chance, and I put some feelers out there, nobody responded, and given the ludicrous wording discussed possible action regarding council member decorum, as so if he used the wrong dinner fork at a formal party. If Mr. Wilkerson does not resign, and based on this ridiculous wording, weak wording, from weak opinions, weak will, not looking to enforce any standards on themselves, but an air trigger will do the same to us. If Mr. Wilkerson, still sitting in that chair as Mayor Pro Tem by the end of this meeting, I will be immediately going to the Lee Police Department and formally Filing charges under at least Texas Penal Code 22, Section 8, Number 2, intentionally or knowingly threatening another with imminent bodily injury, because that's the only way it could be taken. He wasn't coming down there to discuss Sudoku techniques. He wasn't coming down there to discuss classic artists. There was only one way that that could have been interpreted. So, once again, we're going to put that to you in the city. I have no faith or confidence that you'll actually apply the standard to yourself. You didn't then, and I don't have any, any, any expectation that you're going to do the same. So, I'm going to file the charges, because if I tried, if I'd filed them prior to this meeting, I wouldn't, be able to, I wouldn't be able to speak on this topic tonight. Using your rules in accordance with the way you folks want to do business. So then, if criminal charges then stall, what have we established? We have fascism and a little petri dish just for You know, I'm not a big second rights amendment guy. I don't walk around scared in public with a pistol on my hip like I'm in the Wild West because it doesn't cause for it. I don't personally think it calls for that. I don't think it personally calls that you wear a weapon inside the chamber. I think that that's kind of uh, silly. But if you want to do it, I don't have a problem with you doing it. 
Um, so I, I do think the police are here for everyone's safety, not just mine. And I'm reminded in that situation when Officer Sierra, you know, he did. Obviously, he thought that I needed to, you know, backtrack off of what I was saying, and I did. When he put his hand on my chest, I thought about it. I said, okay, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's de-escalating. And that's exactly what he was supposed to do, and he did what he was supposed to do, and it worked. Um, now, if somebody still wants to come up here and bring a weapon into the chambers, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you folks, a lot of people just do things just for I bait. They don't carry their weapons. They talk about Second Amendment rights. They do all of this stuff just to drum up some conversation. Because it's, it's fun to fight for a lot of people. But when we act to actually talk about the pragmatic and the practical instance of this, I don't think that you're really stopping anything. It's been said before. As soon as this meeting is over and we exit out that door, that door, this door, <laughs> what stops somebody from shooting? If we can't control them out there, why would we? What's the difference in here? So that right now, just based off of everything that's been happening over the last couple of weeks, and I do, I thank you, I do thank you for bringing this up because it's worthy of the discussion. But I just don't. Um, I'm not in favor of it, and um, I, I can't see an instance. And you know, God forbid anything happened that makes me look silly up here saying this, but. I, I can't foresee it. In a risk mitigation situation, I don't see that this is a top agenda item. We got a lot of things to do, and spending a lot of money on metal detectors and making sure people leave their weapons somewhere else, I, I think we have more important things to do. So with that, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be in favor of this. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, and I respect your opinion.